I've learned a very profound lesson about the pursuit of happiness from this neighborhood here. I've just moved here in Singapore and it has taught me a very profound lesson about happiness. That's what I want to share with you. And I also want to introduce to you my video producer, Jack, and I want to ask his questions about happiness as well. I'd love to hear about your thoughts on happiness, what really brings you happiness in your life in the comments below. So basically for me, being in Singapore has been opportunity overload and I've been distracted by all of these opportunities. I've been chasing more and more goals. I have been achieving some of them and I've realized that they're not making me happier. I've been accumulating more possessions. They're not making me happier. And I've been having so many new experiences traveling around the world and frankly, it's providing temporary moments of happiness, but it's not resulting in this deeper and more lasting feeling of happiness and contentment within. I feel like we're constantly pressured to pursue happiness by chasing external things. I know that in my own life that that's what has happened the last few years. I've moved to Singapore a few years ago. I'm running a business from here. It's been growing a lot over the last few years but as it's been growing I feel myself really trapped in this cycle of trying to be happy firstly by setting more goals bigger goals and constantly trying to achieve those goals but I've noticed that I'm becoming quite exhausted in the process so I end up working really hard and I may even achieve some of those goals and I just feel a little bit flat as I get there it's hard to really slow down and just I feel like that promise of happiness that once you get there, it just doesn't feel the same once you actually achieve that goal. And being in a place like Singapore, it just sort of, it just, it kind of reinforces this pursuit of happiness through achieving your goals. Because I feel like it's, it's a place full of successful people. It's a place full of so many opportunities to achieve all of these different things. And then you feel like if you're not always chasing something, you're not able to be a successful person and then you can't be happy with yourself just for slowing down and doing nothing. The other thing that I've been experiencing is around trying to be happy by buying new things. So as things have grown a little bit, you realize that it's at your instant disposal. You can just buy new things. You can go on that holiday. You can travel across, in my case, to visit my brother in Saigon. It's just been a relentless pace lately and I realized that I'm getting everything that I ever wanted, all of these opportunities before me. And being here in Singapore is reflective of that because it's like a beautiful little island in the midst of all of these different places to go all the time. And you end up going on that holiday and you just feel that little bit flat when you're there. It's hard to really, um, to really enjoy it the way that you feel like it's promised to you. This is a really vibrant part of town. It's kind of like a hipster enclave, art studios everywhere, awesome cafes. And then I realized why I feel so happy and calm in Tiong Baru. And it's because Tiong Baru has resisted the onward march of progress that I see all around me in Singapore. And I realized about Tiong Baru that it's the old world values that are deeply embedded in this community that are carried on by the people, the choices that people are making to keep these shops in place, to have heritage around the tree, heritage around the architecture, not just to slam everything down and build up new condos in the onward march of progress. And so the more time I spend in a place like Tiong Baru, the more I'm reminded that I can make the same choice in my own life. I can lose myself in the constant pursuit of new things. I can lose myself to the trappings of modernity, to always trying to chase, to find my happiness in the pursuit of external things. Or I can slow down and make the choice to commit to a certain set of things deep within me that will be the things to bring me happiness in the long term not this temporary fleeting moment of happiness that you get from the dopamine hits from buying new things, but 
from committing to a set of values, from committing to a certain rhythm of living my life that's much more reflective of what's going on here in Tiongbaru. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Morning. Morning. Good, good, good. <laughs> People are super friendly here. So being here in Tiongbaru, I realize that I have been chasing happiness in all of the wrong places. I've been pursuing it as though it's something that I can attain. And I realized that I learned this in Huda Yande's out of the box online course. And in module one, he goes through some of the fundamental myths of society that keep us trapped in a certain way of living life that just won't bring us that deeper meaning and fulfillment. So one of these is the illusion of happiness. So he calls it the hedonic treadmill. Huda puts it like this, how many times have you heard that the purpose of life is to be happy? And how many times you felt like garbage because you were not feeling happy? There are so many people on TV and Instagram showing their disgusting smiling faces to us every single moment that we started believing that there is something wrong with us when we are not happy. We start believing that being not happy is unnatural. But happiness is just one more emotion among so many we have. And all our emotions are sacred. He goes on to say, Enjoy happiness when it comes, but let it go too. And be open to experience each emotion which comes to the surface of your consciousness. Each of them are important and sacred. And the feeling of wholeness, of being a whole human and being at peace with all the pieces of yourself is the best feeling you can ever experience. Enjoy being alive without the burden of having to be happy and you will save yourself a lot of frustration and will be able to enjoy your life much much more and that really resonates with me because i've fallen into this trap of thinking that if i'm not chasing all of these opportunities that life has to offer here at least in singapore as i'm experiencing it right now then i'm somehow failing as a human being i feel bad about myself if i'm not on this hedonic treadmill and I realize that I need to get myself off and find a different way to experience my happiness. By detaching from the pursuit of happiness, you avoid these traps. You can relax in your life and enjoy your current reality in all its beautiful complexity. Each of your emotions, even the painful ones, can become a gift if you can embrace them and use them consciously. And that's the key, I think. It's about embracing the fullness of life, the ups and downs, the joys and the sorrows. It's about being present to what is rather than always chasing after what could be. And the more I sit with this realization, the more I understand that there is a path to experiencing more happiness in life. But it's not the path I thought it was. It's not about the pursuit of happiness, but rather the pursuit of something else entirely. Actually, it's a great moment. I wanna introduce everyone in the community to Jack, who is now doing the videos. You may have noticed a change in quality. Really happy that you're here, Jack. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. So uh, we met here in Singapore, and we're here in Tiongbaru right now. What do you think of Tiongbaru? What's it like here? It's incredible. You've yeah. got a real community feel to the area, which I miss personally living in a condo area. Everyone kind of keeps to themselves. Um, but here it's kind of like, almost like a little quaint little village. I feel like I'm in London a little bit when I'm here, but there's also a really strong Chinese heritage too, wherever you go. It's like a fusion of China and the UK. It's a pocket of, of East meets West in a way. It feels like a little bit of the slow life, but in the midst of a huge bustling 
busy city of Singapore. So what about you, Jack? How many years have you been here in Singapore? This is coming up to my seventh year now. And would you say that you're happy in Singapore? The word happiness is very interesting to me though, because happiness is the most important thing, whether it's family or work or lifestyle. But, but then I asked someone the question and they said actually contentment, oh, yeah. which I think is a very interesting dynamic because you can't force yourself to be happy all the time. I think that's actually um, unnatural. So there's times to be happy, there's times to be sad, but I think if you're content, it's the kind of the middle ground of both. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole topic of this video, the pursuit of happiness. I feel like in a place like Singapore, it, it's so representative of this global consumerist capitalist system we live in where we're pressured to try to seek happiness in buying new things, in working ourselves to the bone, in you know, being part of the rat race, basically. And Singapore is an incredibly dynamic place. There's so many opportunities here. I feel like it's almost opportunity overload that you start to feel not so good about yourself if you're not chasing all of these opportunities all the time, if you're not fully participating in the system. Mm. That's why I love a place like Tiong Baru, because for me, it's not participating in this system, in this relentless onslaught of progress. Mm. It's kind of marching to the beat of its own drum and it's a slower rhythm. And that's just something that I love about this place. What I've come to realize through my time here in Tiong Baru and through my own inner journey is that true happiness comes from connecting to what's timeless, to what really matters. It's not about chasing the next big thing or keeping up with the relentless pace of progress. It's about slowing down, looking inward and cultivating a sense of contentment that's rooted in our deepest values and relationships. For me, that's meant reconnecting with the things that have always been true for me, even amidst the noise and busyness of modern life. It's meant cherishing my relationships, the ones that have stood the test of time and the challenges we've faced together. It's meant rediscovering my connection to my homeland of Australia and finding a sense of groundedness in my roots. And it's meant learning to embrace the struggles and challenges of life, not as obstacles to happiness, but as opportunities for growth and depth. Because it's in navigating these challenges, in staying true to ourselves and our communities, even when it's hard, that we find a more profound sense of meaning and fulfillment. So what is this elusive path of happiness? For me, there's three key things I've learned from the strength and the resilience of Tiong Buru in the face of this onward march of progress. The first is the importance of authentic relationships in your own life. I see this all around me. I can feel this within, that even when there's been some really challenging times, when you're there for your friends, there for your family, those are the commitments you build that serve you well for a deeper sense of contentment in the very long run. The second is a commitment to inner growth, to understanding what is real, what is true in your own life, what really matters and committing to that. And the third thing is always staying true to yourself. That's what I see in Cheong Baru. That's what I think we all need to maintain a commitment to, to be on this elusive path of happiness. So as we come to the end of this video, I wanna leave you with that thought. Happiness isn't something to chase, but something to cultivate through the choices we make and the way we live our lives. And places like Tiong Baru, with their commitment to community, simplicity, and staying true to their roots can show us their way. Here's to finding our own path to happiness, whatever that looks like. Thanks for watching.